Paul, man, what's going on with it, bro? Chilling me, you know. <laughs> yeah, we got foreign innovator, originator, CEO. Ah. What else, man? Creator. creator you got the city designer. jumping, man. Designer. Swiss. One man army. Real talk. <laughs> All right, man. Let's let's start from the beginning, man. With the um clothing line, tell people what is foreign and where did it come from. Foreign is a franchise mm -hmm. nationality type of brand, which means like different races, different cultures, different all type of people just into one thing. So, you know, I got, I kind of got into the habit of trying to like start something that's diverse, but it's going to fit everybody. So it's like just not for selected people, it's just, you know, blacks, white, blacks wearing it, white wearing it, Chinese people wearing it, Haitian people wearing it, Kenyan people wearing it, like all type of people. Mm -hmm. And they're comfortable in their own skin, so it's like, it's just, we just take everything in one brand. Mm -hmm. Not an idea, did it um, just, how did it come about? Were you just sitting in your room and said, I want to be a designer? No, I was already in a fashion industry type. I always had a passion for fashion, so mm -hmm. I always, and I had a name in the city, so I want to take advantage of that, because the support I already had before my brand, mm -hmm. I was gonna take advantage of that and um, start a clothing line. So, boom, I started a clothing line, but because <laughs> I started plotting and brainstorming what I really wanted to do, I wrote down all the type of names I wanted to, with my clothing line to be. I wanted to, like, I had all type, I had a list of names. Mm -hmm. And it was like, man, it's not fitting. I just don't want to start a clothing line just for, just for the sake of it, like I just got a clothing line. You gotta I do know. it right. Yeah, I gotta do it right. I wanted to make sense. I wanted it with a purpose. I wanted it with a passion, with a, with a reason behind it. So mm -hmm. boom. I had um thought of farming and I was like, yeah, I, see, I could see a potential behind farm. I could see a story behind farming. So I was like, man, I could see everybody wearing it. I can't just see a select a few people wearing this. I could see all people around the world wearing farming because mm -hmm. it's farming. It's a diverse brand. So that's what my aim is, and it's towards, and that's what I'm pushing towards. So. Uh -huh. Now going on with the form, you spell it different. You don't spell it like the regular F-O. You spell it F-R-G-N, right? Right. Why that um, way? I got abbreviated for um like type of other reasons, but mm -hmm. I felt like it was more unique like that. Mm -hmm. The foreign is already a regular word. It's just it's right. a real word already. I can't trademark or copyright the word foreign because it's already you know that word. Gotcha. So I said F R G and boom. It's something I can just trademark and copyright with my own. Cause I I did my database research on that. Like nobody has F R G N. Mm -hmm. So what F R G F R G N could mean multiple things, right. but it could even stand for something. But form is abbreviated into F R G N, and nobody used that. So I'm like, you know, I just took it upon myself to do that. Uh -huh. Now getting into the um, clothing business. Is it what you expected it to be the first, I guess, the first shirt or any type of product you put out? Mm, kind of. When I first started, I did my copyright first. I did the legal things first. Right. Before I even much branched out because I had a potential and I knew that was going to be something. Right. And I said, damn, I got a lot of support behind this. Now I must do nothing yet. Right. So, so you, you know, got to get everything together behind the scenes I, I started, first. I raised my little money. I think. I got about four, 400 shirts. Mm -hmm. It was logo shirts and different colors. And what I'm talking about as soon as I posted on Twitter, as soon as I posted on Instagram, Everybody. I ain't must want bash one in here with a high price. <laughs> I said, look, these 20 out of just 20 out of logo shirts, just to start it off, like right. just to get my logo out there. So um, as soon as I tweeted that, I'm talking about a second, not a second leader, man. Paul, bring me one. Paul, bring me one. I was talking, about I'm going around the city from uptown, downtown. Get it in, sell it. Got it in. So I'm like. And I made that money back in like two days plus something. So mm -hmm. I made my profit and I made the three or four thousand dollars I had spent on a 400 shirt. Mm -hmm. Made that back and it was just on it popping from there. I mm -hmm. just started with shirts first because I ain't really wasn't into the, I wasn't into the design and like sewing right. and all this and that yet. So I was like, all right, let me just start these shirts. And the potential I had behind my back, I'm like, man, I got to keep going. And I did, I got to kept going. And right it now. Was like, it really was something. Now you say you made that. When was, when was that? When was that first shirt made? The, with Man, the logo. This has been five years ago. I'm five years in the game. So about 2013, 2014. Mm -hmm. now, go, now going on from that, when did you feel your name started jumping? Did you ever, um, because you say you sold them in two days, but did you ever have, I guess, like a drop off when it came to reality? Like, damn, I got to get this better. I got to start selling way more. Yeah, see, I ain't have a website at, at this point. I didn't have nothing going on. I just had. All I had was the type of communication I had with my customers, my new customers that I just dropped, my shirts. All I had was 
Twitter, mention St. Paul, bring me a shirt, how much it is? Um, $20, boom. I just brought it to him. And hand to hand. Hand to hand. And right. that just, that's something I had to work my way up. I had mm -hmm. to, you gotta crawl before you walk. So that's what gotcha. I did. So I started delivering. If I don't care if you stayed then. <laughs> You coming, me, look. I don't, <laughs> coming. I'm coming, like you know, that's a, there's a passion behind my behind it. So that's what I did, and you know, as time went by, I was just I got better and I leveled up, and I just started getting more easy. Where you could reach out to me, I could ship it out to you. Now I'm, you know, I'm shipping all across the country, and right. you know. Now, um, we're doing that. Are, are you just a one man band? You do everything yourself? Yes, and it's, it's stressful. I was just about to say, but that gotta Actually, be hard. Just, I don't have. I mean, I don't get me wrong, I have close people behind me that's backing me up and and there's depth for me when I need them to be there. Mm -hmm. You know, if I could sling them some few shit, man, look, drop this off over here. They stay right, right they stay five minutes from there, so I don't got to ship it off to the post office, you know, for right there. Right. Um, but as far as, like, sewing the clothes, as far as, like, even, like, pro producing the clothes, I'm in it by myself. Mm -hmm. And I read Larry Monroe's book, and I, I, I learned a lot from his book, mm -hmm. uh, All Best On Me. Is you need a team. You can't get fucked without a team. Mm -hmm. You need it. So, you know, it's good to build your foundation from scratch right. by yourself. <laughs> it's good to know how to do everything before you start right. hiring. It's good to um, build your foundation from scratch by yourself until you get to that certain level. Like, I can't do it no more. Right. I, got, I need a team. I got to do something. I need some people behind me, like, help me, assist me. Like, mm -hmm. you know, so, as what? of right now, I just about yeah, to say I'm in it by myself, but. I'm still, you know, it, and sometimes I get backed up, sometimes I get my back against the wall, like, damn, it's too much, I'm piled up, I'm piled up. And I have, I have that side of the team behind me, but as far as, like, you know, helping me sort of close. Mm -hmm. you know, um, now, um, when, when you feel, would you, I guess, develop and how hard would it be hiring people for your team? Um, Either it be deliverers, I guess, people run your online site, or uh, people just take care of the orders about that i'm gonna have to just look for a person that's going to be strictly about that i mm -hmm. might have i so that this basically i have to be busy 24 7. i have to be right. i can't have no slow days but for me i have the assistant to me to have an assistant that's just strictly foreign mm -hmm. they gotta be a job for them a full-time job for them so right. i mean i have to work into the process of me keeping keeping myself busy or keeping myself piled up with orders mm -hmm. throughout the day because all businesses have slow days you right. can't have you know it's, it's always going to have slow days for a business but i'm gonna still need that consistent flow of work to do for that assistant to you know be have a full-time job like y'all would perform right so that's something i'm working towards answer. yeah it's like my was a perfect time right i was piled up i was i was backed up i didn't have no help i didn't have I had everything by myself i shipped out everybody's stuff i could I, you know, at a, at a timely manner, mm -hmm. but you know, just that I just have to work into developing a person that's going to be strictly for a farm. So I'm gonna have to work towards myself to get to that level. Gotcha. Now, um, in the, in the clothing line in New Orleans, Mardi Gras is a big deal. You told me that was one of your busiest days. Out of out of all, I guess, selling clothing lines in New Orleans, do you compare yourself to other people upcoming with clothing lines? Like I seen this, I seen this product, I seen her product, and I want to do something like that. No, see the thing about my brand, I'm only in competition with myself. I don't see other people as a competition. I don't see people as like, damn, I should have did that, I should have did this. No, right. I'm not gonna limit myself to nothing. If, if this person dropped this, if I'm thinking on something, and this person, this person dropped it before I even must hopped on it. You ain't doing it. No, I'm gonna do it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna do it. I'm just. <laughs> I'm not gonna limit myself to you know somebody because you you did this first. No, it's about how you do it different. Right. You know what I'm saying? It's that's like with Louis Vuitton and Gucci. If Louis Vuitton dropped some drop some headbands before Gucci did, Gucci will still do it. It's still gonna do it. You know what I'm saying? So it's not it's like uh, you can't limit yourself with that. It's, you can't. It's, it's you hop on it, do it, and that's it. Mm -hmm. Somebody else do it before you, cool. Uh, our brand's different. I'm doing it different, you doing it different. Mm -hmm. Clothes is clothes. A shirt is a shirt. Pants is a pants. Like headband is a headband. Socks is socks. Logos and differences. Have you ever got? Well, I know you got a complaint. How how, how severe was the complaint? I had a few complaints. Mm -hmm. um, I had customers that ordered from my website that they didn't get it in time. I shipped it out. It's 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 the, it's the post office responsibility. So I'm gonna have to deal with that because. Some customers just don't treat business as a business. Like, if there was an order from Fashion Nova, if there was an order from Gucci, if there was an order from 
Dolce Gabbana, any type of Supreme, any right. type of brand, you want to see them saying, oh, I didn't get my package yet. What my package yet? Oh, you have to give it time. <laughs> like the post office, you know, like I'm giving you the tracking number. I'm, I'm, I'm giving, I have to, I have to act according to your attitude. So I'm basically, I can't tell y'all what I want to tell y'all. You're a business, you're a business, right? right? So I have to, um, I have to just keep it cool and just, let you, and just try to handle it with you. So yeah, I had a few complaints. I had, yeah. I had a few. I ain't gonna lie, I did. Yeah, every, every business will have a complaint. Everybody will have something to say. Right. So of it's, um, you just gotta deal with it. Gotcha. Just like with a regular job, you gotta deal with, deal with an angry customer. Mm -hmm. now, um, is it um, hard selling product in New Orleans, based in New Orleans, I guess? What you mean? Like, um, like people, a lot of people say like, a lot of people ask for discounts just because they know you and oh, things like that. <laughs> like that. But yeah. they don't ask the big stores yeah. for discounts See, like that. The thing about that is, you can't know a lot of people in New Orleans and try to start a business. But you're very popular though, yeah. so you do. Right. But the thing about it is, everybody thinks because you have a foreign shirt on, you support them. It's not supporting them. You got it for free. Mm -hmm. See? That's not supporting them. Uh, yeah, I give you a foreign shirt, but that's not supporting them. Supporting is actually investing into that brand. Right. Especially if this brand coming from scratch, coming from a, coming from the ground. Right. And you're trying to build your foundation. You're trying to build your, your brand to be something as far as in a top, high top brand. Mm -hmm. So if I'm, um, see, I give you a phone shirt and I say, damn, I'm wearing this phone shirt every day. That's the thing I support in my eyes because, see, my shirts cost $30. Them $30 is the you support. You just lost it, right? Right. I, that that could have been the only money I made all day. Mm -hmm. So, it's like, um, people don't understand that. People ask for discounts, like, oh, man, it's part, no part, man. Man, give me a, man, what's up, man? I don't got, I don't, man, the, the hood is $40, man. Look, I got $30, bro. You can't let me go, I got $25. You can't let me, no. No, but just like you got bills, good. I got bills too. So I gotta, you know, I gotta invest my money. I gotta brand, I gotta branch myself up. So that right. money, it, it matters. Definitely. You know, don't get me wrong. Ain't nothing wrong with showing love to people. Right. But at the end of the day, at the end of the day, you still gotta make your money. And people don't understand. They just think you just getting free. No, the money you put into them shirts, you gotta I'm make some more. I gotta make that. I gotta flip that. So yeah, it's, it's bad down here. Cause it, <laughs> <laughs> now let's get into some fashion influence, man. Who, I guess, influence you or who are some creative designers or creative fashion heads that you look up to in the business? Um, I like Off-White. I like um, Supreme, Tommy Hilfiger. Like, I like I like brands like that. Mm -hmm. um, they influence me, but you know, all of them came from money. So right. I it's can't different. Really say it's a it's different, different route. It's, it's a different route. Y'all came from money. I didn't come from money. I, I mean, I invested my money into it. So you know, but brands like that, I I, I influenced myself to get to that level, mm -hmm. and that's who I look at more. You know, but you know, I, I just feel like I don't have no local people that I could say that. You look up to. I look up to. Mm -hmm. What about um? We have some. We have some real cre creative people in the city. Like I can name a few people in the city that's really cre creative and. But it's just something that you know we on our own field. We mm -hmm. we doing the same thing, but we on our own field with it. Like you know what I'm saying. So nah, I'm not looking up to you, but you know what's the best for you. You see your work, just, right? We, we, can, we can just go to the top together. Mm -hmm. Do you ever see, I guess, a foreign in another um creative collab clothing, even if it's just. A jumpsuit or something like that. A collab. Yeah, it's called foreign. It, it it could be anything. Somebody else clothing line and yours and y'all combine or something. Oh, you saying would I do that? Yeah, collab. Oh yeah, collab. A collab is like basically like what rappers is features. Mm -hmm. So it's like you know, um, a collab is like actually more exposure. Like if say if somebody higher than me want to collab with my clothes, of course I'm gonna do that because it's gonna right. give me more exposure. And you liking my craft, so we're going to benefit off each other. Mm -hmm. and that's how it's supposed to go. What if somebody is lower than you? Do you charge them? Or? I wouldn't charge them, though. I mean, we're going to make this money together. And the shirts, I, the, the, the money we're making from wherever we're selling, mm -hmm. is going to get half and split down, and we're just going to go to both us. Right. So, no, I wouldn't charge. Like, that's something like, as me, at that, I was at your position at one point, mm -hmm. trying to get to my position. And I'm trying to get to the high position. So, it's like right. a change. So, I'm like, you know, I'm yeah, going to help out. you out. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's all about, you know, it's, it's just, you can't block your blessing like that at all. Right now, I'd like to ask you, since you're in the clothing business, how you feel about, I guess, a lot of people boycotting huge brands for so-called, I guess, racist things of blackface? How do you feel about them things? I don't 
like, like the big brands. Do you feel that they do it on purpose yeah, or it's accident? Them, them they pissed me off with that, um, that monkey, mm -hmm. the, the, the black dude on the shirt. It was it, that was it was uncomfortable for our race, mm -hmm. and it's like you know a lot of people, and we still shopping at H and M. That's right. crazy, but it's like a lot of people then wasn't feeling what, what they was coming from with it, and the another boy, I, I heard that a boy really got some money off that, but I, I just don't condone that like having racial things, messages, and clothes and brands, and, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? And I can't, I have to go, I have to go against that because my brand's called Farm, so. Ain't no racism, ain't no racism going on in my brand, cause right. it's a diverse it's for brand. everybody, everybody, every race, mm -hmm. all colors. Now, so. um, now, now, um, with the foreign clothing, do you feel? I guess you, how many steps? I want to ask how many steps you feel you're away from being where you want to be at. It's never, it's unlimited. Right. It's unlimited. It's like it's not, it's not enough steps. I'm more, if I keep climbing to the step I won't be at, I'm more still won't climb more steps. Mm -hmm. So like. It's not in it. I'm not in it for the money. I'm not in it for nothing. It's a passion. This is mm -hmm. something I really want to do. This is something before. when I die, I want to leave a mark on this earth about farming. I want to have this uh, top brand in Saks Fifth Avenue. I want to have it in, you know, all type of malls and like a franchise brand for real. So, so it's not, it's a disguise to limit. I could be at the very top and still want, still be on another ladder to be at another top. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it's going, it's going to keep going. I could be more successful than anything or anybody and I still want to keep going. Right now, what you feel is your, I guess, best achievement with the foreign brand so far out of your five years? What was the highest moment for you? The highest moment is now, like, every every year, my fit is being in the same position that I was in last year. And every year, I'm, every year I'm climbing, I'm, I'm climbing, I'm, I'm building, I'm, I'm, I'm branding, I'm branching out. So it's like more and more people seeing my logo, more and more people buying my clothes every year. So I'm, I'm shipping to all over the country. I'm shipping not even much in New Orleans. My base, my fan base is in New Orleans, but I have few people here and there pick right, like everybody see you. Everybody We're see you from this state, from that state, from this state, because I can show you my website, all this like it's all Miami, LA, New York, Texas, Atlanta. I ship to all them people. I even shipped overseas before. Mm -hmm. So I'm like if I'm shipping overseas, I'm really getting recognition from people overseas. So it's mm -hmm. like the 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 recognition there. Is it's, just a, it's just a matter of time like I wanna get fabulous or Lorraine or some somebody like that to wear my clothes. And mm -hmm. That would be a big sports like they, they say that person wearing it, I want this too. Mm -hmm. So basically, like, your, your focus got to be, like the society these days, your focus got to be on these celebrities. All right, because they're going to follow the celebrities. Exactly. Now, with um, shipping overseas, that's um, very, that's rare for a lot of people. Um, was that a surreal moment for you when you first saw that? It was a real moment. I did, it, I did it twice, to be exact. I did it, I only did it two times, and mm -hmm. I shipped overseas. One was in the military. He was already from the USA, but I really shipped from somebody. I can't but pronounce the damn city. <laughs> <laughs> I can't, but it was like, <laughs> I shipped to somebody way on the other side. I don't, I don't, I can't but. I don't know, it just I got to know. him though, huh? That's got all that matters. They, they recognized it, they, they, they watching me. <laughs> and you don't know who that person knew. Right. You no, know, so they, they got friends out there in Japan or something. Somebody will be like, oh, I like that's that all, shirt, where you got it, it from? That's all it takes. Right. That's crazy. Now, uh, man, when you gonna, gonna get the store um, open, man? You got the online, when you gonna? Store. I got a friend on um, feet, Maple Boutique, he helped me push my stuff out. Like I got a lot of merchandise I drop and I ship to him. I mm -hmm. give it to him to help me. But my, my own store, I want to give it a few years. I feel mm -hmm. like it's not necessary right now. Cause mm -hmm. I don't know why I want it stationed every day. So, um. Talking about city? Uh, city, city wise. And like, I really probably wanted to stay. I wanted to start it up in Houston. Right. Cause I'm already, Doing my work down here, like uh, you know so, you saying? feel like you got the fan base down here. You trying to? Yeah, I mean, I, it, nothing. I would I really want to have a store in New Orleans. This is where I'm from, mm -hmm. so I really want to have like a solid store in New Orleans. But as far as branching out, I just feel like that could wait, like probably two or three years, because mm -hmm. it's like I'm not there. How exactly how I really want? I'm not. It's not where I want to be at right now. Gotcha. Like the store wise. Mm -hmm. Now, what's saying that you told me your highest moment? I want to know your lowest moment with the foreign brand. You just sat there. Have you ever thought about quitting? You was in your room like, man, it's just too much. I'm doing it by myself, I can't do it. I had a, I had a lot of overwhelmed moments where I'm like, I just, I just felt like I just wanted to give up. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to like, man, this, but not actually giving up because my overwhelmed moments came from me being busy. Right. My so. overwhelmed moments came from. All these orders on my phone, like right. That's not a bad problem. That's not a bad thing. So it's like 
I, I ain't gonna lie. I would, sometimes I do have, I do be feeling discouraged when mm -hmm. I drop something, and a lot of people, a lot of people, how I'm expecting not buying or whatever. They ain't feeling this, these shirts, or they ain't feeling these pants or jeans mm -hmm. or whatever the case may be. They ain't feeling these how I thought they would be feeling these. So I get a little discouraged, but I never want to give up. Though. I never want to give up on my clothes. I came too far. Mm -hmm. yeah, I came too too far, and I'm like, I'm like. My logo reached over, it gotta be over a million looks. Like, gotcha. that's my logo. I, I, I guarantee you a million people see my logo. <laughs> so, I mean, it's like, I can't give that up. I, 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 had, I, got, I had some downtime, but like I said, it came from overwhelming. Right. Now, um, adapting, you say a couple people might not be feeling you, so you know you can't please everybody. Can't. How do you adapt to your fan base, um, the culture, with making um, your material? I don't know, that question kind of went over my head with that. Like, um, things like, do you get your fans involved? Do you ask them, like, y'all feeling this? What type of um, acts y'all want? Do y'all yeah. do a poll, things I like that? I definitely love, see, the thing about me, I love criticism. I, like, I want you to tell me something I don't want to hear the better myself. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, I do I, I do kind of get my fans involved. Like, when I'm having fashion shows, I want this person to tell what do you feel comfortable wearing in some of my pieces that I made. Right. So, um, I like feedback. If it's negative or positive, I like it. I, I, I want it. I want it. I want you to tell me what you're not feeling about my clothes so I can better myself. And, you know, criticize me. I want you to do that. I'm not going to see it, man. You, Everything you know, good. I'm not going to see all that. I want you to tell me. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's, <laughs> like, you tell me, why are you telling me this? Like, why you, why you, no. I want you to tell me that. So it's going to be on my mind. It's going to be stuck on my mind. And I could at least try to better. I could buy, I could better myself with that. That kind of, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So. Criticism is something good to go with. What, what's your advice for a young entrepreneur starting this clothing line right now? What's your advice to them? My advice to an entrepreneur starting this clothing line is don't do it for the money. Do it because you want to do it. Do it because it's a passion. Do it because this is something, this, you found your talent and this is what you want to do. Don't, see a lot of people in this city start businesses and, and stop within six months because they feel like they, they start the next person doing it and don't respect the grind they yeah, think it's over and they think it's just pieces and cream of walk in the park and it's not mm -hmm. and they're like they don't want to put they don't want they don't want to bake the cake they got the ingredients to bake the cake but don't want to bake the cake like they, they don't want to they don't want to sit there and watch sit it there and it watch it and, you know what i'm saying so it's like just do it just just, just have a passion for it like the money go come your talent well everybody have a talent Just if you could do something for free, that's what you need to be doing. That's huh? what you need to be doing. The money go all the magnet come. Right. It's, it's, it's like that just a, it's supposed to be a passionate thing with anything. Anything you do. If you're doing it for the money, you ain't gonna get fault. Right. Now Paul man, tell your fans what they can expect with your new product coming out. Or do you have anything new cooking up right now? I got a spring collection coming out. Um I don't got no pictures to show you at the yeah. right now, but I got a spring collection coming out. I got a few things, shirts, you know, like I'm making some jeans. I'm gonna start getting ready for the summer. I'm always two seasons ahead. Right, so gotta be. Gotta be. So, you know, I got some two pieces coming out in the female. I started with some slides. Somebody who never wore your clothing or never seen it, what, what would you tell them? Why, what, what, would, what would be your pitch to pick your clothing line? I want the customer to buy my clothing and make, I want them to be proud into buying it. I want them to be like, dang, I really have a foreign shirt. So right. basically, if I got a new customer, I'm going to explain to them what foreign is, if mm -hmm. they never heard of it already. Because it's nine times out of ten, they probably heard of it mm -hmm. and said, man, I always wanted to buy your clothes, just that and third. But I want to explain to them what foreign is, how, What's my goal towards it? Like, what's my aim towards this brand? With that you, the shirt that you're holding, you're holding, you're holding your hand. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, I just want them to feel good about my merchandise. I don't, I don't want them to just have a shirt. Well, I just need something to put on for this. You know, right. I want them to have. You now, God, I'm on. Just let them, let them know where they can reach at, man. Where they can reach your clothing line. Where they can contact you about inquiries about clothing. Let my them know. Clothing line. Well, my Instagram is Eric Paul underscore online, P-A-W underscore online. My business page is Byform, B-Y-F-R-G-N. Also, my website, mm -hmm. byform.com, B-Y-F-R-G-N.com. Um, you can reach me on there. 
I'm gonna get my phone up out. But, you know, just <laughs> <laughs> Any last words, man, for the people? Bro, so just, you know, I'm in it. I'm, I'm, go, I'm gonna be up there. I support everybody in the city that's doing anything. Got a lot of creativity down here. You know, no hate. Everybody just come together in New Orleans. And that's it. Let's go, man. We got Pub by Foreign Clothing Line, man. You know it. Innovator, creative, designer, sewers, everything. One man on me, man. He hiring. Come get him. We on TV, man. We out, man.